Previously on Majora's Mask. Eat it, Treasure Chest minigame, eat it! And now the continuation. Hey everybody, it's Dekinosa, and here I am with another episode of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Oh god, I've been waiting to say that for so long. <laughs> so, last episode, we did some things, and now we're preparing for a major side quest. We're actually gonna pick up the 100 rupee chest right now and meet our way over to the mayor's house. You see, we have some serious business to take care of. Uh, you may have noticed a long time ago, or at least some time, we were going through this town. A guy in a blue hair with a Keaton mask from Ocarina of Time, of course. You might recognize it from there. Well, we're gonna take care of that. The Anju and Cafe side quest, for those wondering what I'm talking about here. So, what you wanna do to start this off is go to East Clock Town. And from there, the rainbow should appear. Not really, though, because we still have some waiting to do. This quest is actually going to take a lot of waiting, so I'm going to start jumping around a lot here. But as you can see here, this is the mayor's residence. And it is only open, actually, if we talk to this door, from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. So, it's 7 a.m. right now. We're going to have to chill a bit. I'll be right back. So you know it's kind of getting close when Luigi shows up at your doorstep. That's right. Bother, bother, bother. I'm busy, I say. Blah! Trying to get in there before he does, but to no avail. You're only able to get in there after he does because he gets in right at 10 a.m. Because he has a desperate appointment with this fine lady at the register here. <laughs> I am of the Gorman Troop. I have an appointment to meet with Madame lately. Oh, really? Then you should be just fine to go on in. Well, we're not going to deal with that guy anymore. He's, he's a chump. I don't deal with chumps. So make your way into this room and completely ignore the Zora right there. Sidestep him, you know, completely avoid him, whatever you have to do. Oh dear, are you on a field trip? Or are you an expert person finder, I found? Essentially, she's looking for a professional person finder. And she's going to give us a mask to find the person who is Cafe, who is her son. And he disappeared about a month ago. It's very terrible, so she's very worried. And she can't get food down her throat, and she's lost five pounds. I don't think she's having much problem with weight, though, right now. If you know what I'm saying. We'll look for him, and of course, I'm an expert, so count on me. Trust me, I am a doctor. This is how you obtain Cafe's mask, and yeah. We should wear it to inquire about the missing Cafe. Any person we ask about him, we should wear that mask to do it. That's a way of, you know, some games have dialogue options where it's like, Have you seen this guy? But you gotta wear a mask. That's just how you ask questions around here. Now, this part is something I don't normally see shown off. It's actually a diary, Cafe's diary. The wedding ceremony is soon. It might be early, but I finished my wedding mask. I wonder if Anju made hers. She tends to do things at the last minute, so probably not. There is a gathering of the fellows at the milk bar tonight, and I plan to show off my wedding mask and show my sweetheart a good time. Oh, yes. So now, given that, we know that these two are in a loving relationship, because one refers to the other as sweetheart. So it really makes you wonder, like, why is this guy gone? Like, did he really get kidnapped, or is he just on his own, doing something, you know, suspicious? Who knows? The only way we're gonna actually find out, though, is by asking the lady in the relationship. That's right, girl, I'm talking to you, Andrew. Not you but you, this building. That's right, I like this building better. The Stockpot Inn. Now, we're not gonna really talk to her right away. Instead, what we're gonna do is wait until around like three o'clock PM or something like that. And we're gonna intercept a conversation with her and the mailman because she's gonna receive a rather interesting letter that will, well, you'll find out, just, just watch. In a day now, I'm just, you know, wasting my bunny ears away. Oh, look. So at two o'clock or around there, this postman will come in and he'll be walking up with a strut, a manly strut. This guy runs around for a living, so he's pretty physically fit. Ah, um, what is this? Yeah. I have delivered this to you. Uh, what? Wait, this letter, where, where did you? Yeah. From the post box. Th that's not what I mean. From the post box where? From the post box somewhere. Oh. That's not what I mean. <laughs> I freaking love that scene. 
Oh, geez. So, you gotta wait until this guy walks away. And after he walks away... Thank you. After he walks away, you talk to her, and she's like, Welcome to the Sockpot Inn. She asks if you have a reservation. So if you say yes, you say, We have a reservation. And surprisingly, we're in there. Mr. Link is down for an afternoon arrival. My room is the KNIFE CHAMBER on the second floor. Now, I've always liked how this item screen actually makes note of the fact that we didn't have a reservation unless somebody else had to. It kind of clues you in that there's probably somebody out there who's going to be really pissed in a few moments when they come in for that reservation. Which mask am I going to pick? Oh yeah, that one. Yes, this is the mask we use to look for cafe. Is it not weird to you, lady, that I have the face of your boyfriend on my face? Just saying. <laughs> so we're gonna meet with her at 11.30 p.m. And that is the utmost maximum that we have to do for this situation. Now it's just waiting time until 11.30 p.m. But we're gonna actually give it a second here. We're gonna wait for the guy who should have been here to get here and see what he has to say about this. Oh god, it's a Goron! Um... You're not gonna hit me, are you? Like, I'm, I'm afraid of you, dude. Just, just stay away from me. Just, just walk up extremely slowly to the, you know, the cashier, the waitress, the hostess, the secretary, whatever she is. I'm terribly sorry. There are no vacancies today. We're booked. I made a reservation. The name is Link Goro. Link Goro. <laughs> oh God, his limerick is uh. Yeah, he says Goro after every other word, so. He's, uh, kind of screwed there. I guess the receptionist who took his order kind of said Link and not Link Goro. Whatever the case, he's not going to go on pound this establishment down and say F your couch, madam. He's just going to sleep outside. But before we do that, let's talk to him real quick. It's a hard world to live in, Goro. In Goro. I don't know. This guy's going to sleep outside. I admire this guy's patience and understanding. I mean, seriously. I'm gonna speed up time just to see what that guy does. <laughs> so on the night of the first day, and you can already hear him snoring, what's he gonna say? The wind has gotten damp, Goro. Tomorrow is rain, Goro. This guy's an all-timer natural freaking weatherman. Alrighty, so our job here is to actually meet her in the kitchen, which means I'm definitely gonna go upstairs and check out my room first, because why not? We have like six hours away from the time we're supposed to meet her. In your room, which is the knife chamber, we find a hundred rupees. That's it. Oh, there's also this hole in the wall, too. It's kind of important. Just saying. What a ramshackle in. This is first class. BS, man. We're staying for free, so we can't really expect much, though. So, yes. Now that we've explored our establishment, let's head on to the downstairs lobby. More specifically, the kitchen that we're supposed to wait in. And thus, wait for this beautiful woman to come and talk to us about her lovely boyfriend. In a few minutes! In a few minutes meaning a couple of hours in game time, but yeah! Poof. Now, a hilarious thing I like to do to show my friends is this. That's right, if she's not in the appropriate place inside the kitchen, she doesn't talk to you. I am sorry to trouble you late at night, it's about him, cafe. Oh, it's about him, huh? It's always about him! Strange, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty strange. But there's absolutely no mistaking it's from him. It's clear to me. Please, here's my letter. Please put this in the post box. When this is delivered, when he receives my message, you should be able to meet him. Please tell him that Anju is waiting for him. And please, after you've seen him, tell me how he looked. I'm scared I can't go. Can I ask this of you? Yeah, sure, sure, why not? Yes, yes, quite, yes. So we received a letter to Cafe, which we must put in a mailbox before 6 o'clock a.m. tomorrow. So we have plenty of time. 
We should mail it immediately in the morning. Technically, it's not morning yet, but we can still do it. Well, actually, no, it's a it's middle of the night. It's always hilarious to me, actually, how this map, um, whenever you finish that cutscene, it actually, quote unquote, resets you and she's just gone. Come on, get in the door, damn it! <laughs> All right, so our, our objective right now is to literally just walk over to that mailbox, put it in there, and then go to the laundry pool. And just wait there for a second. So let's do that. Slip it right in there, in your slippery wooden throat. <laughs> ka -ching! Makes me kind of miss the uh, bouncy mailboxes in Wind Waker. I don't know, I always expect those to just like hop around. You know, dance around because they have mail in them. That's what they usually do. But I must be mistaken. Well, not mistaken, just like... Must be thinking too far ahead of my own good. So, there's nothing really much we can actually do right now besides make time advance, so... Let's... Play the freaking song of double time and wait for that guy to come out of that door. And then walk over to the post box over there. Postman's gonna ring that bell, call him over there, and he's gonna walk all, all the way over there. Yeah. I will see you then. the bell and here he comes quick let's get in his house right now let's do this it's the only way we must personally invade his house through stealthy tactics like jumping right in front of him through a lake and into his house I can't understand why he doesn't notice that but hell I'm not cafe he's cafe that's why he's missing or is he so we're just gonna chill around here for a second. Just wait. No big deal. So how's the weather? I hear it's pretty uh, rainy on YouTube. Yep. Got that leaky roof in this YouTube land. I'm not Brandon Gaming. Oh look, he's coming now. Woohoo, I'm saved from having to stall. <laughs> green hat, green clothes. Andrew wrote about you in her letter. It seems you are looking for a cafe. Can you keep a secret? Yeah, sure, why not? Andrew trusted you. I shall also trust you. I am cafe. The cafe we're looking for is an adult. When I look at you, I just see a child. I was turned into this by a strange imp wearing a mask, but I'm not hiding because I look this way. When I was turned into this, I went to see the great fairy in the shrine near the north gate. But on the way, my precious mask, a wedding ceremony mask, was stolen from me by a man grinning weirdly. He's basically talking about the guy who uh, actually tried to steal the uh, old lady's bomb bag. It's a pretty interesting connection there. Oh my, I pity you. I know Anju is worried, but I can't go out yet. I made a promise to her that I would bring the wedding mask and greet her. This pendant, give it to Anju. I don't know, man. I could easily just pawn that off on eBay. All right. Pendants of memories get. Though I may not be able to understand these grown-up matters, I should take the pendant to Anju anyways. Because, yeah, these, uh, these, these con- The concept of me- bleh, The concept of marriage is too great for my understanding. And I've been entrusted with a precious item. This is accomplishing a lot in the bomber's notebook, by the way. Oh, God, I almost forgot something. Let's talk to this guy one more time. He will tell us that things get stolen from this town, and they always end up in the curiosity shop. So he's waiting for that to happen. If I stand on that crate and peek in that hole, I can actually see into the curiosity shop. So, basically, what he's trying to do here is wait for the guy he knows stole the mask to come to the pawn shop. Once he does come there, he'll be chasing him down and trying to beat the crap at- No, just, uh, getting his mask back, yeah. <laughs> so our job right now, if I lost you on that train of context, is, um... Basically to deliver the pendant to Anju. 
If we don't do this, Anju actually leaves town on the third day, so we have to make sure we get this to her by the end of the second night. She makes the choice whether to leave or stay by the end of the second night. So we gotta make that choice very clear to her. What up, Anju? I got something for you. It's a nice pendant. Sudden doesn't work here. Hmm. Maybe I should talk to her first. Oh, did you meet him? Who greets people like that? Thank you very much. That's right. That face looks so happy. We've made her very satisfied. From now, there's honestly nothing much we can do except for wait for the next day. So I'm going to go up here and just chillax for a minute in my room because I like sleeping and sleeping is fine. What? Did I just hear the thing? What? Okay. Well, I'll see you in a bit. So if you stand in this hallway, you'll actually be able to see her leaving into the employees only room. If we walk up to the door after she goes, we realize it says employees only, no admittance. So we're going to know the only thing that comes natural to us. Eavesdropping. Except we can't do it yet. We're gonna have to wait for a few seconds. All right, it's 930. Time to do this. See, everything here is falling apart. You can hear the voices next door. Okay, Anju, we're leaving in the evening for the ranch. Oh no, that's not good. Kremia will take us in. She's your best friend, right? I wonder if Cafe is really at Kremia's place. What? If Cafe is there, your mother will give him a smack. Besides, think about Kremia. She needs strength from a partner and business support from Madame Aroma. If Cafe really has run off with Kremia, she'll get both. Please don't be sad. How happy could you possibly be? Marrying a man who runs off when he's about to be married? It would make your life unhappy, just like your mother's. But in the letter it said he'll definitely come back. Come back to what? Won't this town be crushed beneath the moon the morning after tomorrow? Forget about that letter. For now, just try to survive. Everything else will follow. Yes, mother. Thank you. Well, you see about that. I've got a few thousand words to say to that. I mean, you don't just immediately assume that the guy who's marrying you is going to run off with another girl. That's just ridiculous. He's nowhere to be found in that ranch. And that's just obnoxious that they would think that way. But at the same time, it's reasonable because you're a mother and you got to keep an eye on things like that. But still, like butt steel, you just don't do that. You don't mess with a girl's mind like that. Anyhow, we have a few waiting times to do, so a few waiting time. That's very grammatically correct. Uh, we have a little bit of waiting time, so I'm going to actually cut here and uh, see you when I get back to wherever I need to be. Just a little longer, a little more. BAM! Song of inverted time. I'm gonna make that stuff backwards. Turn time inside out and everything. So I'm actually gonna slow down time here just because I haven't done this part in a while and it might take me a little bit extra longer than I realized, so yeah. So coming to this house as of one o'clock PM on the final day and talk to this dude. Ha, <laughs> you're the green hat kid, huh? So he's got a message from Cafe, and he's known him since he was really little. But when he showed up looking all young in that brat body, he didn't know what he was seeing. But all it took was one glance from that Keaton mask to know he was his old friend. He gave him that mask a long time ago when he was just a little Cafe. Didn't know he kept it for so long. So now the mask is mine. Give it to me! That shiny Keaton gold mask. Seriously, they like shined it. They used, what's the word I'm looking for? They polished it and everything. Now Cafe says he wants me to take this to his mother. This opens up two possibilities. It's priority mail, so hurry up and deliver it. A customer came to my shop last night. Now Cafe sees him and Cafe's color just changes and goes running after the guy. Sounds like he's doing what he planned to do, yeah? It's Sakon. Now we know the name of the guy who tried to steal from that old lady. Yep. 
We also listened to the guy's memories and got the Keaton mask, and we're delivering a priority mail package now, so we have two things we can do with that parcel, but we're gonna worry about that in a minute. I'm gonna show you both of those things, and honestly, that mail parcel is gonna have you doing this quest twice, but it's very important that you do it just because you want all of the items and the envelope has two different possibilities of getting you two different very important items, both of which I'll go over later. So the shopkeeper mentioned that his base was in Icona Valley, so what you want to do is actually go to Icona Valley by heading out from Clock Town to the west, to the east actually, to the east. And uh, you should meet this desert path, continue going with Epona, jump over a couple fences, and talk to this guy with Garrow Mask on. And once you do that, a tree will sprout with which you can hookshot to. I didn't have the hookshot before, so I didn't explore up there. But now I do have the hookshot, and thus I'm able to explore up here. Now be mindful, you want to probably use the bunny hood or something to kind of speed up around here, but... This part's actually about to get kind of creepy because of the type of monster we're about to face here. Look at this, just, just look at that. Just look at those monsters just popping up right there. They're like Gorons that pop up from the earth, their face is hella weird. Look at that, he's just staring at me laying on the floor like an old man and... It's crazy, it's creepy, it's... <laughs> Welcome to Icona Canyon. I'm your hostess, Deki Nosai. I'll be your tour guide, your maid, your receptionist, your secretary, and your Deki. Gee, I sure do love it when people know that I'm recording and interrupt me anyways, you know what I'm saying? Let's continue up the rightward path and find ourselves up on this cliff. Now you did see, you're, you're not mistaken here, you did see a heart container. And yes, I did actually instinctively try to kill this Deku scrub. I apologize, sir. You're just trying to sell some stuff. Um, apparently curse. Demons, uh, demons aren't afraid unless they see something that looks the same as themselves. A blue potion, 100 rupees, no thank you, sir. I'll take my chances with the curse, thank you very much, sir. So, we have here a hideout. A very cleanly indicated hideout that has a sign in front of it that says, Sakon's Hideout, protected by impenetrable security. You cannot penetrate this solid wall of concrete. So, it's advisable you just stick behind here, talk to Cafe real quick, and be like, I found him, Green Hat Boy. Because your name is not Link. He's using this place as a safe house for his stolen goods. Apparently, his name is Sakon. He came to the shop last night and I followed him because I'm a stalker. His storage for things he's stolen is on the other side of this rock door. Only Sakon can open it. He has the clicker. Oh wait, I have made a promise to Angie. He'll show up. Well, I'll make time go by a little bit faster. Thank you very much. Just skipping along here with my stolen goods, yeah. Yeah. Nobody's behind those rocks, man. I'm just skipping along, minding my own business with stolen goods. Oh yeah. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be okay. Just stealing some shit I found on the parking lot from somebody's pocket. Opening my door. My big ass rock door. Going inside and being like, hey, nobody's gonna follow me. <laughs> there we go. So after that mild diversion, let's get on in, shall we? So, this is Sakon's hideout. It's a pretty simple layout so far. We got crates on the left, pots on the right. We can smash them if we want. I'm not sure, actually. I don't want to bother testing. Obviously, I had the stone mask on for a little bit there. I just didn't want to, you know, ah, get caught or anything. Look, there's a mask there. It's the sun's mask. That is Cafe's mask. We've been detected. Now I've done it. Cafe, you fool! What have you done? Step on that switch. What? Are you telling us what to do? It's some setup where the door stays open only whilst the switch is pressed. Alright, let's do it then. Alright, so now we are in control of Cafe. 
There should be some device in this room that also opens the door. Oh, that mask! He's trying to pull it out of our reach and make his escape. We've got to hurry. If I, if only I could think about what to do. I can't push this. I can't push this one either. I can't push this one aside to push a button. Oh God, what do I do? Huh, I can't believe I have to check game facts because of this. So it's not a pull door, it's a push door. I get it now. It's up to you, Link. Get the job done! I don't like him, but is there a choice? Should we help him? Not moving ahead in the face of danger when you know it's for the better is just like tail. That's it, let's go. Alright, plant man, you're going down! Oh yeah, now we're in business! Ah oh, damn, that red button seems to make the treadmill go faster. But the yellow seems to make it go slower. This should help. Why has my only challenge been to kill these things? You have the strength of the muscle while well, I got the strength of the mind. That's why I get to solve all these complicated puzzles and shit. Like pulling down these blocks. And then pushing this one to the left. And then pushing this one downward. Onto the blue button. Alright, you keep telling yourself that, sir. I'm gonna go ahead and deal with these wolfos. Same as Ocarina of Time, bam! That's right, just snag him in the back. Just like that YouTuber told me in that one comment. All right. A little more and bam! Not even close, baby. So after the interesting foray into the imagination of Deki freaking no side, we got the sun's mask back. We helped Cafe, and this was added to our notebook. We haven't quite finished that quest yet. There's still some time. He's got to get back. Oh yeah, you get to that lady, sir. You get there. And show us. For 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah. Keep running. There we go. Alrighty, so, um, now we don't really have much else to do here, so let's make our way back to Clock Town as fast as humanly possible. And we'll talk about that later. So as I mentioned before, there are two outcomes for this. The first one of which you will find directly in the milk bar. We are going to deliver the letter directly to his mother. With that being said, we have to use the cow mask to gain entry into this bar. Afterwards, just pull out the uh, envelope or the delivery by extremely fast mail and give it to her. By speaking to her, of course. Oh dear, are you alright with that feeling? Oh yeah, by the way, I... I kind of forgot you have to use Cafe's mask to deliver this. For some reason she needs context before I can show her a message. So, yeah. Oh dear, you're the one searching for Cafe. How is it? Have you found him? Why, yes indeed. Here's my message. Priority mail, huh? Interesting. This, it's from Cafe, correct? Correct. Wonderful. You really are an expert. Indeed I am. I am a freaking awesome expert person, lady dude person guy thing, dude. So we have a bottle of Chateau Romani, but more importantly we have our last bottle. The very last bottle we could possibly have. Sweet, right? So this is one of two outcomes. At this point in time, she can't really give me any more, and uh, she wanted to just give me that sooner anyways, but for some reason it took an express delivery to her to get that, but let's take a moment to stop right here and show you just what other thing you can do before showing you this. Alright, so immediately after coming back to Clock Town from having done the quest for the second time, you should go to the post office, which is in East Clock Town. So the post office is actually right here at this red roof. Just go inside there. And you'll find the post office man just uh, lying there panicking. Like, what is he gonna do? So we're gonna pull out this, uh, this here letter real quick and show it to him. Ah, this one doesn't even work like that, so you just talk to him. Oh, I want to flee, but, but it's not written on the schedule. Oh dear. T to me, the delivery schedule is the highest priority, even though I want to save my freaking life, you know? Th this is a priority mail seal! This is the hugest of priorities, I shall deliver it. 
So from here, we must observe this man as he enrobes himself into the official postman's garb. With the backpack and the hood and all. And from here, we won't actually just stalk him as he makes his destination, his final delivery of the night. Dare I say the final delivery. We must observe as he runs, runs, not ones. I don't have a lisp, I don't have a wisp. Observe as he runs through the town, minding his own business, delivering mail. You know, if there was like a postman minigame where you had to go through all the town, that's more like Animal Crossing's alley, isn't it? What you want to do here is actually take on the Moo Moo mask, the uh, the cow mask, and let yourself into the door as well. Just be prepared for that. And he's gonna deliver the message to her instead of you. So we'll just observe their conversation. I have a deliver for your postmistress. Oh my, it can't be. You're still here. T -t -t Tomorrow's delivery is still scheduled. What are you saying? Didn't you see the sky? It's terrible. But what? Oh my, well, what shall we do? It's from Cafe. <laughs> yeah. It's priority mail. I'm so happy to think that something good would come in the mail. Thank you. You flee now. That's an order. Understood. So he's gonna run away and, um... Uh, hello? Let me, let me talk to you. No? Um, guy? Don't go! Don't leave me! Dude, dude, let me talk to you at least. Let me, let, dude, dude, for real, for real, dude, come on. Oh, he just sits there, okay. I have decided to flee. It is an order from the postmistress. I am now free. I can set my own schedule. I don't need this anymore, so here, I'll let you have it. So we got the postman's hat. This dignified hat allows me to check the mail. So we can finally break federal law and snoop into the mailboxes of unsuspecting sir. Whoa, that guy is frolicking like madness. He is so happy to be leaving here. Just look at him go, man. Just look at him go. Freedom at last.
This cutscene was perhaps the most beautiful cutscene in Majora's Mask. Every time I'd played through this game, I would do this quest and... It would be so... so... sentimental. And every time I got to this point, I would stay with them... Until the world ended. It's pretty... pretty... Strong feels coming from this one. This side quest is probably the best side quest in Majora's Mask. I'd rate it number one. I mean, if there's any if there's any fulfilling story in this game, it'd be this one, right here. But sadly, I cannot let myself get crushed by the moon. I have business to do. I have to save this world, and thus I play the Song of Time and return again to the dawn of the first day.